Paleoconservatism. It's a label that's been recently thrown around the American political sphere. You might have heard it on the news or being flaunted by one of your favorite commentators or in the bio of an edgy 16 year old kid. It's largely been used as a catch all term for right wing populism used by the corporate media to vilify conservatives. This has led to a lot of confusion as to what actually classifies as paleoconservatism and what doesn't. So let's set the record straight. Paleoconservatism is an American conservative ideology rooted in a mentality of traditionalism, isolationism, and an embracing of unifying nationalistic tendencies. Paleoconservatism as an ideology is based on social outlook of Christianity and WASP or white Anglo-Saxon Protestant ethics. Thus, a broad coalition of Protestant and Catholic conservatives largely support restrictions on immigration, decentralization, trade tariffs and protectionism, economic nationalism, isolationism, and a return to traditional conservative ideals relating to gender, culture, and society. And as a result, paleoconservatives also tend to oppose abortion, gay marriage, LGBT stuff, while liberals and progressives tend to see the individual as the fundamental building block of their society. Paleoconservatives tend to view the most crucial foundation as the family. Paleoconservatives don't see America as a nation of individuals finding the easiest way to pursue whatever desires compel them. They see America as a nation of families seeking the means to raise children and pursue virtue. Thus, paleoconservatives use their political platform to promote authority and govern with a mindset rooted in paternalism. For example, paleoconservatives by and large favor the use of social systems not to favor single parenting, but instead to financially incentivize through tax cuts and stimulus funds the raising of families and providing stability for children. Much of this platform includes promoting families, safer neighborhoods, and an overall agenda that prioritizes the development of the American culture centered around traditionalism. Paleoconservatives are also rooted in the natural skepticism of the ruling political establishment, largely influencing them to collaborate with various other factions of the right-wing populists. By and large, paleoconservative outlook views society in all its aspects through a lens of traditionalism, family, and Christianity. Paleoconservative will often solve problems by looking at the elements in a society which are hindering the preservation of the traditional family unit, the nation's cultural identity, and especially the influence of the church. For example, paleoconservatives are staunchly opposed to the normalization of homosexual marriage as they see this radical redefinition of marriage as hostile towards those three things, traditionalism, family, and Christianity. This is also the reasoning behind paleoconservatives' skepticism towards liberal economics like capitalism. They view a nation's structured around an unstable foundation of consumerism and commercial growth as not only unsustainable, but also harmful to the preservation of the traditional family, a non-consumer based culture, and the church. The agenda of the paleoconservative would largely be similar to that of Hungarian President Viktor Orban. Orban has pursued a social agenda of social Catholicism that mirrors the agenda of American paleoconservatism, introducing a ban on, quote, LGBT curriculum and propaganda, revoking the legal recognition of LGBT marriage, imposing heavy restrictions on immigration, banning the distribution of pornography, and more. Meanwhile, his nationalistic economic policy is aimed at cutting taxes and social insurance contributions, all while reducing inflation and unemployment. He did this by abolishing university tuition fees and introducing universal maternity benefits for new mothers. American paleoconservatives would largely pursue an agenda similar to that of Viktor Orban in Hungary. The modern embodiment of this faction is rooted in inherent and natural conservatism associated with old Baptist Southern America, which stresses personal responsibility. However, what separates paleoconservatism from right-wing populism is a sense of regionalism. The mentality of paleoconservatism is largely rooted in regionalism, favoring state supremacy in politics, and would oftentimes be happy to let the blue states suffer from their own actions so long as it doesn't impact their own state. On the other hand, right-wing populists are often quick to use federal political power to govern their entire nation. The last main distinction is that the paleoconservative movement is largely rooted in Southern and Baptist traditionalism, coming from the flight of Southern Democrats during the 1960s. Meanwhile, the modern right-wing populist movement is a revival of a bull moose conservatism rooted in northern culture and industrialism and corporatism. Thus, paleocons tend to place an emphasis on Christianity, while right-wing populists often don't. 
In the history of paleoconservatism and the various forms it's taken over the years, perfectly demonstrates the manifestation it takes today. The paleoconservative movement is essentially the successor movement to a group known as the Old Right. right. The, the Old Right is a faction of conservatives first appearing in the Republican schism of the 1910s. Following the split of Republicans between progressives led by Teddy Roosevelt and the establishment conservatives led by William Howard Taft, Democrat Woodrow Wilson won the presidency. This forced Republicans to reorganize and create a more unified based of fusionism between Northern populism and Southern traditionalism. This became known as the Old Right, and the policies of the Old Right would best be displayed during the presidency of Calvin Coolidge. Coolidge defined the policies of the Old Right in what would become the paleoconservative faction. Coolidge represented a much more Hamiltonian vision of conservatism, with his support for decentralization, trade tariffs, economic nationalism, protectionism, and a fundamental belief in a natural aristocracy in America. As well, his New England roots and Christian faith led him to favor restrictions on immigration, anti-communism, isolation, Isolationism and a return to traditional conservative ideals relating to gender, culture, and society. Following Coolidge, the old right would also be unified in its opposition to Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal and his interventionist policies in Europe. This took form in the first paleoconservative coalition formed by the old right in 1940. It was called the America First Committee, flaunting a slogan that would define paleoconservatism nearly a century later. Putting America first, the America First Committee, known as the AFC, would push the paleoconservative principles into the mainstream, adopting isolation isolationist policies regarding the United States' involvement in the war in Europe. The AFC criticized President Roosevelt's aggressive policy in East Asia and his administration's provoking of the Japanese Empire. Through acclaimed aviator and public figure Charles Lindbergh, the AFC would become a leading group in pushing forth America First policies. Through Lindbergh's rousing speeches, the AFC would come to adopt social and cultural positions of opposing immigration, conserving traditional values, and promoting Christian identity in America. However, the committee would be disbanded with the United States' declaration of war on Germany, Italy, and Japan in 1941. Despite its dissolution, the committee's influence would come to impact the Republican Party. Thus, they favored a post-war policy of opposing Harry S. Truman's rebuilding of Europe and his emphasis on a globalist economic policy and his acceptance of more and more immigration to the United States. The old right would die out, however, in the Republican primaries of 1952 with the defeat of Ohio Senator Robert A. Taft by war hero Dwight D. Eisenhower. Thus, the New England conservatism that defined much of the old right would be lost to a more liberal and progressive agenda for Republicans. This led to the demise of the New England and Hamiltonian version of conservatism that was offered by the old right. And these developments amongst the old right molded what would later become the paleoconservative faction. With the collapse of the old right in the early 1950s, the various factions of evangelicals, white southerners, New England conservatives, and such would fracture into splinter movements. This would continue until the outbreak of the Vietnam War. The term paleoconservative first developed as a label during the Vietnam War to distinguish the fact action of conservatives who favored the non-intervention in Vietnam from the interventionists who fought for the U.S. involvement, nicknamed neoconservatives. The paleoconservatives were the reaction to the growing influence and domination of the conservative movement by the neoconservative faction of interventionists. However, the paleoconservatives would be dominated and overpowered by the influence of the neoconservative movement in the decades to come. The paleoconservative movement would shift to take a more Southern Baptist identity following the flight of Southern Democrats, which resulted from the progressive great society, civil rights movement, and the sexual revolution which followed it. And as a result, the Republicans would engage in a semi-purge of paleoconservatives within their party. In the late 60s and early 70s, neoconservative figures within the GOP, such as William F. Buckley Jr. and Ayn Rand, called for the GOP to, to purge itself of the paleoconservative influence, calling for the removal of some of the most influential paleoconservative advocacy groups, notably the John Birch Society. Thus, the Republican Party remained dominated by neoconservative voices, such as Barry Goldwater, Gene Kirkpatrick, William F. Buckley Jr., and such. Meanwhile, with the departure of the John Birch Society, the paleoconservative movement shifted and became dominated by disillusioned Southern Democrats. In this era, the John Birch Society oversaw a shift in their movement to be guided by Christian populists in the South, like George Wallace, Strom Thurmond, Larry McDonald, and so on. The turning point for this era of paleoconservatism came in 1992 in the Republican presidential primaries. In this turn of events, the, the former White House communications director, Pat Buchanan sought the Republican nomination for president, and thus revival for paleoconservatism. Buchanan challenged former Vice President George H.W. Bush for the nomination, running on a campaign of American renewal, non-interventionism in foreign affairs, opposition to illegal immigration, and opposition to the outsourcing and manufacturing from free trade. Buchanan's platform of paleoconservatism and American revivalism failed, though, as Bush's platform of tax cuts and neoconservatism prevailed, and this trend would continue for another two and a half decades. The modern form of 
paleoconservatism seen today came through the revival by a new generation during the 2010s. In the 2010s, the John Birch Society ended its decades-long distance from mainstream conservative movement, emerging on the scene to promote a Wall Street figure who they had close ties to. A Wall Street businessman who had a lot of promise. Maybe the greatest, probably ever. Donald J. Trump emerged in 2015 announcing his run for the Republican nomination. Trump came in as an outsider, but quickly attracted the attention of an aging paleoconservative establishment. Trump tooted a platform which mirrored that of Pat Buchanan, only this time with an unapologetic and tough guy charisma, Trump pushed these ideas into the mainstream. But it's unfair to categorize Trump as a paleoconservative himself, as many paleocons view Trump as sort of a fake nationalist due to his rigorous support of Israel, interventionism, and and failure to build the wall, and concessions to progressive causes like LGBT rights and transgenderism. Trump is a more right-wing populistic figure, but he was sympathetic to the paleoconservatives and allowed for their revival. During the Trump administration, figures such as Tucker Carlson became mainstream mouthpieces for paleoconservatism. Carlson, the John Birch Society, Alex Jones, and CPAC would all become crucial in shaping the Republican Party, the Trump administration, and the broader conservative movement, which embraced paleoconservatism. These developments proved that the followers of the old right did not fade away so easily and continued to have significant influence in the conservative politics. In 2017 and 18, paleoconservatism has also seen a mass resurgence in the young generations in Nicholas Flint, who in a Tucker Carlson-like manner runs a political commentary show by the revamped paleoconservative slogan, America First. However, Fuentes proved to be more of a contrarian than a paleoconservative, shifting his movement to become more of a splinter movement, which he calls the dissident right. But nonetheless, Fuentes' influence on the younger generation led to new leaders to emerge for paleoconservatism. Notably, Tucker Carlson and Fuentes' influence gave way to John Doyle, a YouTuber who's expanded the paleoconservative agenda to millions of young people through his video essays. Doyle currently leads an emerging faction of paleoconservative young men that has pushed the platform of paleoconservatism into the mainstream by pushing positions of banning porn, social conservatism, and in opposition to the progressive agenda. Additionally, he's shifted the attitude of paleoconservatism to a more Catholic movement, with his essays on Christianity. More and more, Catholicism is taking a front seat in the direction of paleoconservatism. Demonstrated by the prominence of Catholic paleocons like Clarence Thomas, Ron DeSantis, Paul Gosar, Greg Abbott, Joe Kent, J.D. Vance, Anthony Sabatini, and more. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, is a crucial figure in the modern paleoconservative movement, as he is almost a copy and paste of Pat Buchanan, only his policies are allowed to gain more traction and public approval due to the path paved by Trump's personality and widespread captivation. DeSantis favors an agenda of social Catholicism and traditionalism paired with a paleoconservative mindset of regionalism. His appeal comes, however, in his favoring of a return to traditional ethics and morals, and especially in his opposition to abortion, LGBT curriculum, child transgenderism, and his mentality of American exceptionalism. Additionally, figures like J.D. Vance, Anthony Sabatini, and Blake Masters have recently re-energized the youth for paleoconservatives in office. Vance, Sabatini, Masters, and more are all running on platforms of social conservatism, but also seeking a restoration of the American family, seeking to revive the idea that a couple can raise a family on one single income like in the 1950s. Additionally, they place an emphasis on traditionalism in non-political positions like the arts, architecture, and media. It's likely that this new generation of paleoconservatism will be influenced heavily by such figures and their platforms. This is largely the direction that the paleoconservative movement is taking currently. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Counterculture. Join the Wolf Pack by donating to the link in the description. Like this video and subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you next time, Wolf Pack. Peace out. As time flies by us, I push my faith much higher to be immortal. I'm your guy,